going. Good evening to everybody. Uh, this is the second installment of the Mobuku Chronicles. And uh, it's March the 15th in the year 2011. Um, it's around, uh, well, it doesn't matter what the time is. Anyway, a lot has transpired since I last put up the first episode of the Mobuku Chronicles. And, of course, the big one being the, the uh, earthquake and the tsunami in Japan over the past weekend and the subsequent social and physical damage that has been done and we probably not know for some time how much damage has been done, how many lives have been lost and how long it's going to take the Japanese people to recover from this devastation. And uh, so we've also had in the North Africa and the Middle East more social and political disruption and disorder. Two regimes have been overthrown, that of Libya and Egypt. Not Libya, they're still fighting. Who was the other one? Tunisia. And uh, the weather continues to not cooperate, so to speak. And these are all symptoms of what's going on. And anybody who thinks that the earthquake has nothing to do with human behavior simply doesn't know the spiritual facts. So, but I'm not going to talk about that tonight. What I want to do tonight is um, to set the long-term background to this whole scenario that we're we are involved in at this particular time and um, most people have no idea where we are in the scheme of things. Now one thing I want to bring about very prominently to everybody's minds who's watching this and listening to me is that the human being is both a cosmic being and an earthly being very important to understand this. So if we look at the more spiritual background to what's happening today, we have to go far back in, in time. In actual fact, the Earth as we know it today is the fourth incarnation of the Earth. There were previously three incarnations the first one is called the Saturn Incarnation, the second one the Sun, and the third one the Moon, and we're in the Earth Incarnation. Now the Earth Incarnation began with, uh, is divided into um, epochs, of which there are seven. And the first one is called the Polarian, the second one the Hyperborean, the third one, the Lemurian, the fourth one, the Atlantean, and we're in the fifth, which is called the post-Atlantean epoch, and then there's another epoch to follow after that, and another one to follow after that. And each of these epochs is broken up into seven cultures, and we're going to focus on the post-Atlantean culture, which is an uh, epoch, which is the one we're in right now. And the first culture of that was the ancient Indian, which is not historical, meaning there's no historical record of it. Nevertheless, it's a spiritual fact, because all this information comes from spiritual research that has been done by Rudolf Steiner, and this is... Uh, this information is put down in his books, of which there are 450 volumes. And of course, the, the, this information given by Rudolf Steiner is of the utmost importance for every human being to grasp and understand, notwithstanding 
our color or creed or place of habitation. It is very important to understand that Rudolf Steiner left a legacy of the most immense significance for the whole human human endeavor. And that we are not here just for the sake of, of our own personal, somewhat circumscribed lives. We have a bigger purpose than that. So the ancient Indian culture was followed by the ancient Persian, which it also doesn't have any recorded history. And that was followed by the ancient Egyptian, Chaldean, Babylonian, Hebrew culture, which we do have historical records. <coughs> and then after that came the Greco-Roman, and then after that came the um, Anglo-Germanic, which is the one we're in right now. And we're going to focus on that one. There's two more cultures after this. Each of these cultures lasts approximately one platonic month, which is, I believe, 2,160 years. So um, we have two more coming, a six post-Atlantean culture, where the fifth post-Atlantean, which is called the Anglo-Germanic. The sixth post-Atlantean culture is called the Slavic, and the seventh is called the... Um, well, I've seen two different designations. One's a Scandinavian, the other one is American. Now, the seventh post-Atlantean culture is supposed to end with what is called the war of all against all. And um, that will then move us into the, the uh, next epoch, the, fifth e the sixth epoch which will have seven cultures. And then there's a seventh epoch, and that'll have seven cultures. And at the end of the seventh epoch, the earth will, and the human being will no longer be physical. We'll be spiritual entirely, spiritual being. So right now, and for some time, since actually the middle of the Atlantean culture, which is when we became physical beings as such, became, well, that was the beginning of our physicalization. Right now we are spiritual beings, cosmic beings occupying a physical body, which makes us earthly beings. And this is very important information for you to grasp and understand. And it's all relevant to what's happening today. Otherwise, I wouldn't bring it up. Now, the uh, fifth post-Atlantic culture, the Anglo-Germanic, began in 1413 AD, approximately, around that time. Now, the purpose of the Anglo-Germanic culture from the point of view of the wise progressive powers, spiritual hierarchies, that have to do with the progressive evolution and development of humanity and the earth. The purpose of the fifth post-Atlantean culture, the Anglo-Germanic, is to bring about in a social, a social milieu whereby there's a level playing field for everybody, economically, socially, and politically. However, that has not exactly happened. Anybody who's paying attention can attest. And the reason for this is because around the 1413 AD or after that, there were certain individualities who were very spiritually developed, highly developed spiritual human beings who decided to use the forces that were implicit, spiritual forces implicit in the Anglo-Germanic culture for their own selfish purposes. <clears throat> 